when you came to YNR, you were originally only supposed to be on for three months. Is that right. right? Right. So the change happened when you decided you wanted to continue. The change happened after I had a talk with Bill. Bill Bell was the genius originator of our series and ran it for many years. Um, I said, Bill, we need to come up with some, what you kindly attribute some background to this character that explains why he is who he is. And um, without my knowing it, uh, we had to play a scene for Christmas, Nikki and I, Melody Thomas Scott and I, who I love working with, always have. And she asked me, I was a rather mysteriously wealthy character, but no one knew exactly what my background was. And she asked me on Christmas Eve, and I reluctantly tell her that, you know, I grew up in an orphanage and was left on the steps of an orphanage at the age of seven. And uh, once I did that scene, I said, I'm staying. Because I could see the enormous kaleidoscope of emotions that he could play now um, because it made it a far more complex character. Oh my gosh. And all of us, I speak for the fans, mm -hmm. what would we do without you as Eric Victor Newman? Mm -hmm. I mean, what would we do? I mean, I can go on, and I've said this to you before, the scenes with Dorothy McGuire as your mother, the things with George Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are hanky-inducing <laughs> moments where you can't help but touch at this powerful man. It's so deep with him and what he's gone through and how he suffered and the disappointment in his parents and all of that. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's um, yeah. Um, those are some of your favorite scenes, I know. There. Those are arguably two of my most favorite scenes. There were some scenes with Peter Bergman that were my, um, come close. And of course with Melody, many scenes. But with Dorothy McGuire and George Kennedy, who played my respective parents, um, I'll always remember that. Uh. So you and I have a mutual friend, the beloved Jeannie Cooper, and the first time she saw you said, let's see what you got, Macho Man, which is my favorite thing. That's Jeannie. That was her. Let's see what you got. He comes in, he's, he's like, let's see what you got, Macho Man. And, and what yes. a woman. And can you speak? <laughs> Jeannie Do you remember when she said that? Jeannie, Jeannie came up and said, all right, macho man, see what you've the got. The balls, right? She grabbed me right. And she grabbed me by the private. So I said, oh, <laughs> baby, careful, careful, careful now. So... Um, but that was the beginning of an amazing... I picture. loved Jeannie. I just yeah. uh, loved working with her. And, and uh, we had... I wish they had taped some of the rehearsals. <laughs> it was hilarious. And, and you and, spoke uh, so beautifully at her funeral. I know yeah. I was there with you. And, yeah. And... Um, what a what an amazing! I just had a deep affection for her. You know, it's it's uh, uh, for someone like her to have survived this business for as long as she has. I just uh, had a deep affection for her. Yeah. And your wife had uh, you you had said you were shocked when the audience heard that they were enthralled with the villainy of of Victor. He had. He was a philanderer who isolates his wife on a ranch and locks her alleged lover in dungeons and feeds him rats. But this really happened. It, it did. <laughs> you did this to the character of Michael. It, you, we did. <laughs> exactly. And uh, lo and behold, people loved it. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, keep doing it. Keep locking that guy up. Feed him rats. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the hell am I doing here? Anyway, so... Um, but the public appearances later on <laughs> showed me that people loved that kind of stuff. You know? Right. Sometimes. Anyway. There was a light bulb that went off at some point in your time here where you said, this matters. Like, this was the home you were looking for as far as creatively. Do you remember when that moment was? Yeah. At, a, at an appearance in Canada, Dougie Davis and I were invited to do a public appearance in arguably the biggest marketplace in, in North America. Mm -hmm. And um, I will never forget it. It was, we came into the proscenium stage, there were about 15,000 people crammed into a narrow space, and I kept on waiting for Mick Jagger or someone or <laughs> Elvis Presley to show up, but it was for us. Yeah. I, I was, my breath was taken away, to be honest with you. I was really, I was just stunned, and I said, this can't be, can't, it can't be for us, but it was. 
And then I realized that I'd always looked for a meaning in this profession, uh, a purpose, and I found it right there. What we do entertains people, and that is what we are here to do. Nothing else. But the connection that you have, and you're great on Twitter. I love that you connect with your audience. You do talk to them. You do give them parts of yourself. You do let them, you will respond to people. That's great, because I think in this particular medium, the fans are in on it with the actor. I don't think you get that in any other medium as much. Well, the point is you don't get it when you do a film or when you do right. nighttime television, because you're more isolated. You, you don't realize the effect you have on people. And... Uh, Daytime has given me the opportunity to see what enormous effect we have on people. And the same thing would apply to anyone who does nighttime or theater or film. The difference is they don't go out enough to uh, meet with people they play to. And hence there's a tendency amongst film actors and nighttime television people to become either full of themselves or become cynical. Right. And uh, I was cynical for the first 10 years in this business. I thought, what the hell am I doing this for? I mean, I did everything from Mission Impossible to Gunsmoke to Hawaii Five O to Mary Tyler Moore, Sweet Woman, Aww. and on and on, and um, over 100 guest star roles. And I was so burned out, I was so cynical that I said, what am I doing this for? Because I did not realize that what I did made a difference to some people. And this medium, and I'm eternally grateful to it, has shown me that. So Melody Thomas and you are doing scenes, and she's like constructing them, deconstructing them, finding the subtext, and you go, let's shoot this shit. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> is that what so she's like, let's do this, and then you're just like, who cares? Let's shoot this shit. <laughs> is that what goes on on set? That's right. Well, you know, <laughs> Melody and I just have different approaches to, <laughs> to the work, and uh, I love working with her, yeah. and, and she is so tolerant of me um, so yeah, we just get along <laughs> and Mel will say well, do I look here what? I said sweetheart let's shoot the shit that's all so I just <laughs> like to you know I like to come up with it as I'm doing it, it you gives say it, that yeah. yes I, I, yeah. I like that it gives it more spontaneity to me mm -hmm. but that's how I work that's not how others work so I'm sure I've pissed off some people the way I work but uh, such it is Right there you are I've heard that when you are an actor coming into the Newman family, you guys know your lines, you know your stuff, you know your shit. Like, it's hard. Like, you guys are a hard audience. Is that true? Is the Newman clan to work well, to come in? Is it... Is it, is it is I, I have always been very welcoming. Mm -hmm. Anyone who claims differently is not telling the truth. Okay. I've always welcomed actors coming into uh, the situation who have not been there before, always. And I'm, I'm very supportive, especially of young actors, because I know what it is. This is a tough business, Absolutely. you know? And you're exposing yourself right there in front of everyone to judge you. And um, it's tough. So I've always been very supportive of actors coming into our fold. I love that you mentioned in the book your famous Emmy moment when you're presenting with Aretha Franklin, because I remember that happening. And he, and he says, he meant you wanted to honor Bill Bell. And he said, God bless Eric Braden instead of God bless Bill Bell. And you wrote about it. I mean, I, I could have sunk un underneath that stage. Can you imagine? To disappear forever. You felt that. It, uh, oh, oh, my gosh. It, it, it was a, you, know, you know how you think sometimes within fractions of seconds. And I thought these sons of bitches producers <laughs> who keep on impertinently running right in front of you, Eric Braden, get off, get off, get off, on, or whatever. On the teleprompter. Like so on so. the teleprompter. I mean, it, it, so I kept on saying Eric Braden. And I said, and I want to thank you, and I thank uh, Eric Braden. God Suddenly Eric I said Braden. that. I was with Aretha Franklin, who I admire enormously and deeply. And what a moment. And uh, here they keep on, I mean, I hated the producers for it. They do it on during the Oscars. They do it during the Emmys. They, they do it during the award shows. The don't have the damn thing. Don't have those shows if you don't want people to say what they want to say. Don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I find it outrageous, it to be honest off. with you. 
And uh, then, anyway. But then Jeannie Cooper came in the next day and had God bless. <laughs> Can you talk about that? Jeannie, Jeannie had some T-shirts made up. <laughs> that she wanted all the actors to wear. God bless Joshua Morrow. God bless Peter Bergman. God bless. <laughs> That's so hilarious. Um, then you talk. And I also thought it was, it was one of the most embarrassing moments <laughs> ever we all in my career. Them, <laughs> and God bless her. Eric Brayton says, shit. Anyway, here we go. And then also you mentioned that you there was the time you did win the daytime Emmy, yeah. and you could not be present. And so then in the book you gave your acceptance speech. In the what? You gave your acceptance speech in the book. Uh, did I? Well, you just said, like, I would have said thank you, blah, blah, yes, blah. Yes, to everyone. Blah, blah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, <laughs> in the book, the most embarrassing moment. <laughs> I remember it happening. I going, what is going? On? And God bless Eric. What? <laughs> said, oh shit! What did I do? I think I said something like it was a Freudian slip Freudian or something. Slip. Yeah. It wasn't at all. So how did I get out of this? Anyway, go on. <laughs> you talk about the actor who remains nameless that believes you had him fired and helped him get let go from the show. And when he said goodbye to you and tried to apologize for behavior, you said, forget it. Don't worry about it. You need to see a shrink. You're a good actor, but you're so self-destructive. What can you say about that situation? Whoa. It's tragic because it was a very talented actor. Mm-hmm. It's good. His own worst enemy. I mean, when you come into our group, uh, and go to fellow actors who finally came to me and said, we got to tell you that this particular person said, who is who's the guy, who's the... And then afterwards um, told them that once I'm finished with him, he'll have lost his family, his house, his profession, his everything. And uh, would go to people on stage after having done a scene with me and... Uh, in which usually I would say, love working with you, great to work with you. And he would say the same to you and turn around and tell people, you know, how long do you think this old son of a bitch will be here before I take over? This is something that happened and uh, ain't funny. And um, But did I have anything to do with him no longer being on the show? No, I don't have that power. Nor do I want that power. And I don't wish that on anyone. There are a lot of fans out there on Twitter who uh, think that I'm the one who is responsible for his demise on this show. Not at all. Never was. Never was. Never will be. Anyway, let's not talk about it any further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not worthy of it. I'm going to give you some of your castmates' names, and I would like who you love, and I'd like you to give me a couple words best to describe them that come to your mind. What comes to your head? So let's do first Melody Thomas Scott. She's bop, bop, bop. I love working with Melody. A great sense of humor. Uh, she and I fight very well. And after every scene, I would say that we hug each other and say, you know, we fight well. So, love working with her. Heather Tom. Sweet girl. One of the brightest, one of the brightest young people I've ever met. Extremely bright. She had one of the highest SAT scores, I think, in, mm-hmm. in California and uh, was offered scholarships at all the top universities in America and uh, decided to stay here, work, and make money for her family. I, I just have the deepest respect for her. Your on-screen son, Joshua Morrow. Joshua, I think, could have been a star in films, could have been a star in nighttime. Uh, I'm very happy that he is uh, playing my son. Um, he is a great dad. Um, great respect for him. Amelia Heinle. Amelia Heinle. We love. I adore her. Uh, just adore her. She's just, just so sweet and so nice and and so genuine as an actress. Um, I adore her. Yeah. Melissa Ordway. What a what a what a Abby. <laughs> charming. Uh, she just you know. <laughs> It's all smiles all the time. And uh, again, great sense of humor. And uh, she's damn good and very real. And Justin Hartley, who played Adam. And you had the best goodbye scenes with him. Uh, Justin Hartley was 
um, a damn good actor and strong guy and uh, just the nicest man, just a great colleague and he deservedly now is on to a very successful nighttime show and um, great respect for him. And your longtime castmate, Doug Davidson. Dougie Davidson. Dougie Davidson makes me laugh all the time. Uh, Dougie makes, I, Dougie and I can't do a scene for very long. We start laughing, but um, he's a very bright guy. You know, his, his father, I think, was president of the Alumni Association at Caltech. You know what that yeah, means? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Dougie comes from a very bright uh, family, and, and therefore has a great sense of humor, and we just laugh a lot. He is a very good actor. And Christoph St. John. Christoph is, is one of my close friends and a wonderful actor. Again, great sense of humor. So the book is called I'll Be Damned. Right. Why is it called I'll Be Damned? <laughs> because I asked the fans, I said, uh, I'm writing a book. What do you think the title should be? And apparently I do say I'll be damned a you lot. Do. I do. <laughs> I, I, I I'll be damned. So that's where it came from. Right. Uh, right. The book is fabulous. You must get it. And I just want to say, I've had the greatest time lapse interviews with Eric over the years. It's been one of the most special, wonderful treats of being in this business is to know Eric and to be a friend of his. Thank and it's meant so much to me. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Very you. Good.